Hello everyone, this is Scott Hendrickson, part of the development team here at MindPlace. And today we're going to look at installing the driver for MindPlace products, specifically the Procyon and ThoughtStream, the USB devices, on a copy of Windows 64-bit, Windows 7 64-bit version. Uh, some users have had trouble doing this, so we're going to walk you through exactly how to accomplish that goal. Now, we have to keep in mind when installing this driver, it's actually going to create a COM port, a serial port emulation that is part of the USB bridge that is inside of those devices, our USB devices. And we need to do this in a very specific order. Okay, so what you want to do is follow these steps in the exact order in which they're presented. It's very important to have a smooth install and to make it as easy as possible. So before you begin to install anything, the first thing you'll need to do is come to our support site at mindplacesupport.com to get the necessary software to install. Download the editor, download the driver program. So here we are on the index page of the forum. If you hit mindplacesupport.com, it will forward to this page. To get the software, we want to go to the home page here. And then we're going to go to our sections part here to get the software. Here on the support site, there's the documentation, the manuals, and the software. So we're going to hit software. And we're going to choose Procyon. If you were going to install the ThoughtStream, then you would choose ThoughtStream. We're going to get the Procyon software. You can see there's a driver file and there's the editor file. All right, so what we're going to do is download our driver, clicking that. Once that's completed, we'll also download the editor software. The newest revisions will always be here. So that's all we need for now, and we'll begin the install. So I've downloaded the driver file here, and we're going to go ahead and install the USB driver first. That's the very first thing that we do. We do not have the Procyon plugged in or the ThoughtStream. Neither of those devices is plugged in. Nor have we installed either the Procyon editor or the ThoughtStream interface. The order that we do the installations is first install the driver, then connect the MindPlace device and let it be recognized, then install the software. The editor software. So let's just walk through doing that. Our first step here is to install the driver. So we're going to double click on that. And you're going to see the Silicon Labs wizard pop up for the install. And we're going to click Next and accept the license agreement. Does anybody actually read these things? But anyway, I accept and it's all good. And we're going to go ahead and let it choose that default folder. So we're going to click Next. And we'll allow it to install. Pretty quickly. So it's going to launch the driver installer next. So this is the second phase of the install where it actually puts in the driver. And we're going to do that. And that happened quickly as well. And so there we are. That's the first phase completed where the driver is installed. So let's go over and have a look 
So now we're going to go ahead and plug in our MindPlace device. In this case, it's going to be the Procyon Mind Machine. Okay, so we've plugged in the new Procyon Mind Machine, and the device popped up, and it installed the driver automatically as COM3. So as soon as we plugged in the USB device, scanned for the hardware, and found it. So everything looks good so far. Now let's go over and take a look in the device manager by going to your start menu, control panel, hardware and sound, and then the device manager. And then here under ports, common LPT, it will show us the driver. So everything is clean here, there's no warnings, and it looks like we're in good shape. Let's right click on that and let's get properties. And the device is indeed working properly, and so I'm going to hit OK. Everything else in these tabs is, is fine. If we ever needed to update to the new driver, we would use this or disable it to rescan or whatever. Um, none of these others are that important. We can look at the advanced tab but everything's fine here. Now this is something that we do want to make note of. This has accepted it's been recognized as COM3. So that's COM port 3. We need to make a mental note of that and realize that that's the one for use because we'll have to select that in our Procyon editor. So we have our driver, everything looks good, and it's on COM3. So I'll go ahead and close out this. Okay, now the next phase is to actually install the Procyon, the Procyon editor software. So let's do that. Okay, so now we've properly configured the driver for the Procyon, and let's go ahead and remove the Procyon for now while we install the editor so the editor can recognize it as well. So we'll unplug the Procyon from the USB port and I've done that. And now let's go ahead and install the editor software. It's here on the desktop and we'll go ahead and extract it. And we can extract it to the desktop as well. Okay, so that's going to put the setup application here on our desktop and the files that the setup needs. So we're going to go through that install and we will accept the program files for the ABS. That's fine. Proceed on ABS. And we need to click the computer button here and we'll let it name that in our program group in the start menu. Let's hit continue on that. So that's been successfully installed. And now it's time once again to plug the Procyon back in. And it senses it correctly. Now let's switch the Procyon to PC mode by clicking the middle button on the Procyon on the front one time and we should be good to go. So let's go to our programs and see our Procyon AVS. Then there we are. It launches here on 64-bit. Now you'll see that it's looking at port 4, but it's actually 3 that ours is set up to, so we need to go under Serial Communication, set the COM port, choose port 3 which is available and then hit go to serial communication again open up the COM port LED turns green and we are against we are in action Procyon software is now installed and active on your computer so get to programming and enjoy we'll go over some more videos later on some of the advanced features available in the editor and how to best use those but that's all for installing the software. Uh, just quickly out on the desktop, 
where we put our setup files you want to go ahead and just throw those away because you still have the archive available here you can back that up somewhere maybe create a Procyon folder in your documents and put the driver and the editor but anyway that is it went pretty smoothly trouble free on Windows 7 64-bit we've now installed our Procyon and are ready to get to work thanks for watching